My name is Olga Prichotka and this is Social Talks for you. Amazing dancer, a great singer, person with great sense of humor, uh, Rodrigo Cortazar. Hello. 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 Hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much for letting me be here. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. Let's start. Yeah. Uh, about uh, your dancing career in your hometown, you started dancing in the young age, right? Uh, yes, not very young. I was like at 19, 20, no, 20, 20 years old when I started dancing salsa. Before I used to dance kind of a uh, house uh, at that time. And then, and then I started dancing salsa when I was 20 years old. And then I moved to Mexico City and I keep learning and training in Mexico City. Then in 2007, I moved to Chicago and I started dancing and taking classes with everybody in, in the whole salsa community. But before all that, I started learning salsa in my town, Veracruz, Mexico, which is a, a place with a lot of salsa culture coming from Cuba, especially for Cuba. And um, that's how I learned. First, I started learning danzón and then salsa. But uh, do a music family, just interesting because you have uh, amazing skills and singing, you are a great dancer. Uh, what about the influence from your family? Tell about your family. Well, in my family, I have many, many musicians. Even my, my grandparents used to be, uh, be musicians too, singers from both sides, from my from my father and from my mother. And, uh, and, and, and dancers a little bit, not a lot, but more musicians. And, 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 and of course, since uh, since I was a kid, I was very curious about uh, the art community, especially music. I was playing piano since eight years old and uh, singing and dancing. When I was um, 18 years old, I was part of a rondalla. Rondalla is a group of many uh, guitar players and uh, singers, and uh, we used to just play boleros. And we used to go and sing in the middle of the night to, uh, to moms, to the girlfriends of, some, girlfriends of somebody else. They, uh, we used to get hired for, for, for that. Who were those people who inspired you at the beginning of your dancing career? It was Johnny Vasquez, the first one. And um, then, then I think it was Frankie Martinez, Franklin Diaz. By the time I was meeting many, many dancers like uh, Seku McMiller, Milton Cobo from North Carolina. Yeah, oh, that's from this, yeah. That guy is like, oh. <laughs> no, 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 that guy is, is from another planet. Yeah, I, yeah. Yes, I think now that you show this video, he's my biggest inspiration of my life and uh, somebody that changed my, my life forever and uh, somebody that made me keep growing up as a dancer and also get inspired by new and fresh and crazy things. Like, Always new vocabulary, but of course, Frankie Martinez was one of them. Oh, Los Vasquez, Francisco. Yeah. Vasquez, yeah. They were my biggest inspiration at the beginning. Yeah, because you know, when I was living in Veracruz around 1999, they brought a Bacardi Congress to Veracruz, to my city. Bacardi, Bacardi, yeah. And Tony Vasquez was there, Francisco and Luis Vasquez. I saw them for the first time and I got, I was shocked. The whole, the whole city got shocked because of them. And Veracruz is very, very like, toilet about the salsa community. So they had very high expectation about salsa and very traditionalist. So for Veracruz to see these dancers, it was like a revelation. It was amazing. And they changed the whole uh, vision of salsa. No, 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 they, they were like first inspiration for everybody. And of course, after that, it was Frankie Martinez, Franklin Diaz, Juan Matos, because they brought Juan Matos to, to Mexico City in 2004, thanks to Victor, Victor and, and, and Gabe from Salsa and Clave, because he was my teacher too. And, uh, and then I saw, of course, Eddie Torres. We got influenced by Eddie Torres a lot, a lot. But first it was on one. Just interesting, why you decided to move to the United States? I used to follow many dancers at that time, and most of them were from the U.S. because we were very influenced by all, by all these dancers in Mexico. Um, I'm talking about, of course, from the New York place, I mean, the New York City, it was Eddie, Eddie Torres, Aldolfo in La Cochea, Frankie Martinez. Franklin Diaz was not very active at that time. It was 2007. 
from 2004 to 2007, he wasn't very active at that time in salsa community. He was more into flamenco because he was uh, very into um, uh, this amazing flamenco dancer, which is Nelly Datirado, and he's uh, Editor Junior's mom. So um, I was more influenced by uh, Adolfo Nacochea, Frankie Martinez, Marcus Nieves, and editores and editores juniors, of course, at that time. He was very young, but he was already kind of a star. And then in the other side, I don't remember, I don't, remember, I don't know if you guys remember about this Latin jazz, Latin jazz motion in the salsa community. Thanks to dancers like Shaka Brown, Leon Rose, uh, Gordon Neal, Seku McMiller, and, uh, and uh, who else? I think that's it. And yeah, yeah. And they were dancing together. They were making a show together in Washington, D.C. because at that time, Washington, D.C. Congress was one of the most important Congress in the world. So I met Seku McMiller, first in video, and then in a Congress. And then I was talking to him and, and I was taking classes uh, with him. And, uh, and I told him, listen, I really would love to train with you. And then he said, like, move to Chicago. And I was like, Okay. He said, move to Chicago and you will be part of my company. I'll help you and I'll do everything for you to make it easy. And I was like, oh, well, thank you so much. And I did it. I moved to Chicago in 2007 and uh, I did it most because I, want, I wanted to be a professional dancer. Before that, I went to my first Congress in Los, in Los Angeles. It was 2005, LA Salsa Congress 2005. And I think it was the best, the best version of the Congress in LA in 2005. I saw many great dancers and many stand innovation. It was, there was like, a, like a, for, for sure, there was like five or 6,000 people as an audience watching the, the shows. Wow. And I was recording everything with my camera at that time, the, 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 the big camera. And I, I was watching the whole stand innovation. I was watching Tropical Gym performing with Alianza de Generales. Alianza de Generales in Puerto Rico, started with the purple costume. I was watching Yamule with the first, one of the first version of Yamule. Company and at that time it was Candy Mena, the principal dancer. Carl Ferrer wasn't that wasn't there. Yeah. It was Candy Mena, it was Mar Perrone, Rasove, I don't remember the name of the other dancers, but there was Santo Rico Dance Company there too. Many, many great dancers. Uh, Billy Fajardo, and Kate Marlowe, Junior, and Emily. Many great dancers. And I was like this, like, and I was watching the standing ovation and I, and I say, one day I want to be in that stage and I want to make the same. I want to make everybody standing up from, the, from their seats. And I did it. But the first yeah. movie was go to, to Chicago in 2007. Then from 2007 in Chicago, I, I mean, from Chicago, I moved to Montreal, Canada, and then to Los Angeles, and then to Miami, and then to Italy a little bit, and then now Spain. But why you had such a tremendous, already tremendous career, you were famous in the States, why you decided to move to Europe? Because I wanted more. <laughs> I was, I was oh, knowing... Yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, at the beginning, no. not moved to Europe, I fell in love with Europe. My first trip was to Italy, the own two salsa congress. And first, I fell in love with the, of the level of the dancers. I I've been a... there and I saw you there on, on two, oh, yeah. Really? Mr. Uh, Alvarez, right? The organizer. Alvarez. I remember that I went there and I was like, a humble you, but that's it. If I'm here because they already know me. Then I was watching the shows and I was like what am I gonna do now what I'm gonna how I'm gonna how how am I supposed to dance now because I was watching the level and they were really good I got very very impressed about the level and then and then I got very inspired by them and I just decided to keep training because there was like a like a really good Afro-Cuban level there and and then I just decided to keep uh, to to get back to my Afro-Cuban training yeah, and basically I just decided to move to Europe because I, I want more. I want more. I see. Yeah, I, at first when I was in the States, I was knowing already in um in Latin America. But then I said, I want to be I want to be the one of the best dancers and one of the best uh yeah, one of the best performers of, of the whole world, not just of Latin America, of the whole world. I remember that when I was living in Mexico, I wanted to be the best in Mexico. First, the best in, in, in my town, Veracruz. Then I said, like, I want to be the best in Mexico. And then I said, like, I want to be the best of the, one of the best dancers of Latin America. And then I said, I want to I be one of the best dancers of the whole world. That's why I just... <laughs> but uh, you reached that success 
uh, in the adult age, right? Not from five years old, six years old. What uh, is your formula of such a great success? I mean, to reach top, starting dancing in adult age. Well, well, I had many different formulas, and many different goals from different age. And also, by the way that I was growing up, my goals were changing. At the beginning, I just wanted to be, just wanted to kick everybody on the stage. That was the beginning. That was young. That's, that's the mentality of a young people, of a young guy, right? You just want to kick everybody on the stage. And then, uh, by the time that I was, that I was seeing new talents and uh, different dancers and better than me, I was like, whoa, there's, there's too much to keep learning. And then my goals were, were changing. And then I, my, my goals were like, a, were like a, I just want to keep learning. I just want to, to be inspired by uh, great dancers and better dancers like than me and learn from them. So then that was my search. I just was looking for great dancers better than me to learn from them and to be better day by day. Yeah, but you have yeah, your own style. You have your own style. Uh, what uh, you can advise to the dancers how to build up their own styles, not to you know copy, just copy anyone. Because when we're in salsa community, we have a weakness that we don't we don't study salsa as the the way that dancers study in a conservatory or musicians study in a conservatory. And we don't have this art perspective or this artistic perspective or education, or we don't know about salsa, uh, about uh, art history. We don't know about patterns, that patterns from art are very connected with salsa, but because we don't have this education or knowledge are very less and we lack of this perspective. So many dancers in salsa community, they think that they have to be original. They have to have their own style, right? Even since the moment that they are learning, since the moment that they are beginner or intermediate or when they are becoming a little bit more advanced, they always heard this kind of phrase, like you have to be original, looking for your own style. But then when we see this in the other perspective, something that I've been learning with my beautiful girlfriend and my beautiful uh, mother-in-law, because they know a lot about art, and especially my mother-in-law, uh, she studied four careers, and one of them, it's uh, art history. So she's like Eddie Torres, Billy Fajardo, Tito Hortos, me, and many other uh, Cuban people that know a lot about history together, but about art. She knows a lot about art history. So every time that I have this kind of conversation with them, I'm learning a lot about the other perspective. And if you if you realize what happened in the university dance or university art, and you, um, let's say this, when a painting, when a painter start study paint in a, in a, in a, in a art academy or university, they have to learn their styles or the techniques of many, many famous painters. And they have to copy for many years. For many years, they have to copy Picasso. They have to copy Van Gogh. They have to copy uh, all of them, Dali, Da Vinci, blah, 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 right? And then until almost the last year, they have to start creating their own style. And if, if this happens as a community, they see you bad. They don't see you like like very well. They see you like you are copying and you have your own style. And then you're, the belly of the belly of the dancer is less, right? Yeah. You don't have this education. So in my experience, I've been copying many many dancers in my own career, and I've been criticized because of that, and I didn't care <laughs> because thanks to all that, I was searching on my own style, copying all these great dancers because they were my inspiration. They still be my inspiration. I was copying Johnny Vasquez. I was copying Frankie Martinez. I was copying uh, um, Adolfo Cochea, Franklin Diaz, uh, Juan Marcos. I was copying all of them, all of them for many years. And they were mocking me, they were bullying me, but my, my attitude was always like, ah, yeah, yeah, say whatever. Say whatever you want. Let's see who's gonna be in the top in a few years. And now every time that I see those people that were mocking me, I'm like, hey, yo, 
Let's not do it. <laughs> and a careful and a very careful teacher, a very passionate and careful teacher with your students. What is the main core of your teaching philosophy? Well, um, I think for me and for us, the most important thing is a student. And uh, we work with them in one way, you know. We give everything that we have to them because the most important thing in our methodology, in our school, even in my school since the beginning, before to be working together, it was the students, the public, the audience, you know. Um, I have many idols, not just about dance community, also about music community. And one of my idols in Latin America, my, one of my singer idols in Latin America is Luis Miguel because he's one of the best singers that we have in Latin America. And he always used to say, my father told me since the beginning that the most important thing in my career is my public. So I have to do everything for my public and I'm singing for my public. In my career as a, as a teacher, my, the most important thing is the students. So we have to do everything for the students. We have to treat them well. We have to be patient for them and we have to study. We have to keep studying many different method, method and techniques to teach better and to have a better communication for the students. And especially now that we have these systems that is online, we have yeah. to keep studying and we have to keep, um, have to keep on time with the new methods that people have, that people still learning to teach better to, to students in these systems. How uh, average students can join your classes online, for example, from uh, not only from Spain, but from Ukraine, like me. <laughs> well, we have classes, we have classes, we have a platform, or platform, which is patreon.com slash Rodrigo Asia. We teach Spanish, we teach in English too, we teach from Monday to Friday. Friday, we have uh, special classes. Two times per month, we have Q&A session. And two times per month, we have a special worship, same Friday at the same time, which is 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Spanish time. Our system is like we see the students and we do feedback to the students. So most of the time we see teachers teaching online, it's not a bad critic, no, 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 no. It's a totally positive and also maybe to, to give a better example to other teachers. We are together in this. Most of the time we see teachers just uh, not doing feedback to students, but when we do feedback to students, and instead of just put the giant screen and watch ourselves on the screen, we put the the uh, the, the different screen of the, of the students, and we make them feel that we are in the studio, that we are taking care, taking care of them. Yes, well, the most important. Sorry, I'm gonna add again. Yeah. The most important that we really would like to give experience of the real real class experience. That's what we are trying to do. And uh, we as a teachers, we have much more fun and the students have much more fun. And it's not just about the combinations that we are teaching. We try to teach as most, that's I'm learning from my maestro, and uh, that we try to teach everything why we're doing movements, not just show how to do, just also explain why we do it exactly the way we do it. Yeah, that's why we teach many things. We teach like salsa history or salsa evolution, how they, how people start, how is that people start dancing on two, even since uh, since the 70s. And I've been learning all this from editores, from Adolfo, from Franklin, from Frankie Martinez, from Juan Matos, from many, many great dancers. Okay, you like more to teach or to perform? Or to, so to social dancing? I love both. I love both. <laughs> both. Of course, now I'm missing a lot to perform because I really used to love to be on the stage. But uh, now I'm I'm learning and I'm I'm falling in love a lot about this concept to teach online, and I, I'm enjoying it so much. And I love to teach for real. So many people is asking me like, uh, "Don't you don't you miss to be teaching in the congress?" And I'm like, "No." I'm very, very happy and very uh, pleasant with this way to teach now. Now our students are the best also. Tell us more about your dance partners during your salsa career till now and their impact in your salsa evolution as a dancer and instructor performer. 
Well, definitely all my ex-dance partners uh, are very important in my in my evolution of dance. Because every time that I was dancing with a different dance partner, I was learning. I was learning and I was changing my style every time. Not just because of me, also because, you know, when you dance with somebody else, you have to share different perspectives. And also you learn a lot. And at the beginning, I have to say this, at the beginning of my career, and for many years, I was an asshole. <laughs> for real, I was an asshole. And I was very uh, arrogant and um, a, a little bit machistic for, for real. And then by the time, I, I was learning how to change that. I, and I was learning how to listen better and uh, to have a better commitment with my dance partners. But of course, I've, I was learning a lot from them. And yeah, and thanks God, I had the opportunity to share the stage great dancers, great, great dancers, for real. Bercy and I, we stopped working together. So now I'm just working with my beautiful girlfriend. Once I was dancing with Alien Ramirez, one of the best dance ones that I ever have. And of course I learned a lot from her, a lot. She's a library. She's a library and she knows a lot about African culture. So of course I was learning a lot from her. So once I remember we were in a tech rehearsal <laughs> We were practicing this uh, this choreo that I really love to perform, which is Guajira con Tumbao, which is a cappella song. Yeah, yeah, I know this. And I was yeah. like, Enrico, cha -cha. So at the end of the choreo, we were doing some kind of movement together, and then we were doing a turn, bow to the left, and then I was holding her hand, she was doing this, and I was holding her hand, and I was making her turn to do a split at the end, right? So we were rotating, she was stretching the arm, and I was doing this to her, and I was rotating, right? So, I remember that I turned around, and I was trying to hold her arm, and I was like, what the hell? And then, I, and then I look at her, and she was on the floor, doing like a pirouette on the floor, stand up, she fell down. She fell down and she stand up right away, and she was looking for my arms to do the split. Right away, she, she fell down and she improvised in just two seconds. Wow. And then when I finished the split, I was like, what the hell is just happening here? And then she was explaining in a slow motion what happened. <laughs> And she was like, oh, no, no, you know, the thing is like, I was doing this step, like left step, and then right, and then left, and right again to go into the other side, do the contra pirouette. And when I stepped, the heel went down, and I was like, oh my God, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna break my heel. So I decided to fell down, and then when I saw you, <laughs> I just decided to do a pirouette behind my head and then grab it. Okay. And I was like, so you were thinking all this in just two seconds? <laughs> yeah. Because that's the way that they train in Cuba. You know, in Cuba, they just say yeah, like yeah, a no matter You have to keep going. You have to improvise. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Whoa. And then, of course, dancing with uh, with Versi too. We were in Greece in, uh, in a Congress. There's a video about that. We were performing, we were performing this show. So, la rumba se acabó, tan, 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 our first choreo, right? And we have like a crazy turn party session. We were in the beginning of that session. I'm, I have to tell you that it's like 28 counts of partner work. 28 counts. So imagine that in the second eight count, the music, the music got cut. Oh my God. And I did this like in one second. I did like a, what the hell? And she's like, a, let's do it, Quate. Let's do it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so we did the whole carnival session without music. People got crazy. People were like, wow, wow, wow. That was, that was a crazy experience too. Because we didn't stop. We just keep going. Yeah. What about this project, Los Anormales? Well, this project born in, born in Mexico City. Uh, at that time, I was performing with Selene Tovan. Yeah. And uh, we just decided to, that was before, to move to Mexico to Los Angeles, California. And at that time, we just decided to create a show with many great dancers from Mexico, from different parts from Mexico. So we were thinking about the name. We were talking about Mambo Demons. Uh, mambo crazy guys, something like that, right? 
And then one guy said like, hey, what about Los Anormales? Because if you heard music from uh, Juanny All Star, especially from Hector Lavoe, he always used to scream at the beginning of the song, without the por ahí vienen los anormales, you know, when we heard this song. Uh, um, was, uh, Mi gente, lo más grande de este mundo. Da, 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 da. At the beginning of the song, tum, tum, pom, pom, he, he screamed like, without the por ahí vienen los anormales. So los anormales in Puerto Rico is like a crazy guys or or Normal. abnormal or weird people. Yeah, yeah. So everybody in Fania all start. They were crazy musicians, crazy musicians. So he was screaming to them all the time, los anormales, los anormales. Everybody, every time somebody was doing a crazy descarga, like in the drum side, he was screaming that. So when this friend from Mexico, he said like, hey, what about los anormales? We were like, oh, First, let's do it, Los Anormales. Then Selena Tovar and I, we just moved to uh, Los Angeles and we just decided to keep going with that project and we create that project in Los Angeles, California. And then I just decided to keep going with that project. Yeah, actually we were restarting that project in Italy with great dancers from Italy. Great, great dancers. So, and also not just Italy, also here in Spain and Mexico with amazing dancers too. That video that you were transmitting right now was in Mexico. Great dancer from Mexico City too, and uh, yes, so I think we're gonna restart soon this project online. Will everybody get more familiar with this system? I was really impressed by the pitch of your voice, and uh, in some interviews you you mentioned that you took professional vocal classes. So why didn't you? continue with this career on a professional level. Don't you think about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah and I miss it a lot, a lot, for real. Actually, we were thinking about to buy some uh, keyboard, piano keyboard, and also a guitar, because also I used to play guitar. And uh, just to get it, because she's a great pianist too, and singer, and uh, we really would love to, to do those kind of things together. But uh, about to come back to do this as a profession, it's gonna be hard for me because I remember when I was, when I was uh, sharing those two professions, like singing and dancing, it didn't didn't match each other. Because as a singer, you have to take care of your voice like a lot, for real, for real. You have to uh, sleep well at minimum. For sure. Day. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Less, you don't have to scream. Uh, most of professional singers, they they use like a their mouth, and also once you get sick, it's a nightmare if you have to sing, because I remember that I was getting sick in the weekends or when I was singing very often in the weekend. I used to sing minimum five hours per day every weekend, minimum. But wow. then the, the, when when the when the people in the party were getting uh, drunk or crazy, they were hiring the band for more hours. I remember once I was singing for 12 hours non-stop, non-stop, and I was like, you people don't have home? <laughs> so singing 12 hours non-stop and sick, it's a nightmare. Especially when they ask you to sing uh, songs with high notes, so, it's so that's why. You already mentioned your favorite uh singer yeah Luis Miguel and what is your maybe favorite salsa band I have many I have many uh oh, maybe. Love Several. For singers like my favorite singer as a singer not not sonero or salsero but singer Mark Anthony like since the beginning since I started dancing salsa it was Mark Anthony Ray Ruiz uh Yer Rivera because in Veracruz I grew up uh, as a salsa dancer with these singers and of course orquesta adolescentes no 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 they always have amazing singers amazing singers from venezuela and i remember first time that i went to venezuela and i heard singers from venezuela i was like what are you kidding me and the bands are amazing and especially singers they they are amazing also peru has many many great uh singers and um gilberto santa rosa victor manuel oscar de leon i have many many favorite uh, singers and bands. But uh, I know that um, during the Congresses, you all the time, uh, you're asked to sing. Uh, what do you think if we can uh, make a short improvisation right now? Okay. 
Tanto tiempo disfrutamos de este amor. Nuestras almas se acercaron. Tanto así que yo guardo tu sabor. Pero tú llevas también sabor a mí. Si negaras mi presencia en tu vivir, bastaría con abrazarte y conversar. Tanta vida yo te di que por fuerza llevas ya sabor a mí. No pretendo ser tu dueño, no soy nada, yo no tengo vanidad de la vida, de lo bueno, soy tan pobre que otra cosa puedo dar. Pasará. En la boca lleva ya sabor a mí, sabor a mí. How your singing career, I mean, helps you in dancing in this musicality things. What can you, what can you say? Uh, not all the dancers are singers, of course. Yeah, well, um, first because I studied music from two years and a half in Mexico City. And um, then when I was dancing with Selena Tovar, because she was a musician too, we were talking with one of her friends that was a musician too. And uh, his friend was teaching us many things about music because he was percussionist. And he was teaching us a lot about the, how the percussion work in a salsa and also the structure of the salsa songs that normally they have and also about different rhythms. And it was very interesting for me at that, at that time to learn that. And um, I got super curious about that and super obsessed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Learning more about that and I was just searching and searching and searching more about that. Then I found Tito Ortos teaching his Salsa History Seminary and also he was teaching a little bit of musicality and I was like, I took that seminary six times. I always recommend that seminary, Tito Ortos Seminary. It's amazing seminary and also every time I recommend Tito Ortos for, for, uh, for classes about music, about uh, uh, the structure of the Salsa songs, he's a genius. He's a genius and I've been learning a lot from him. So of course my, my music career um, helped me a lot to improve those musical concepts in my tutorials or in my classes and to, to give like a GPS to the students, especially beginners and intermediates, especially people that doesn't speak Spanish, that they don't, under, they don't, that don't understand what happened in the music, to give them a GPS of music and the social dance and also about choreo yeah you, you have a very good sense of humor i heard from many dancers didn't you think about mc career or <laughs> stand-up show you know once i did i did with party fusion and uh, it was super fun but no way no i respect a lot to those people i respect a lot for example farid roy um armando cervantes from mexico luis vasquez I respect them a lot, and every time that I see them on the stage, I'm like, dude, my my deepest respect, because what you guys do on the stage is not easy. And I, because I experienced before, I totally know that it's not easy. It's not easy to keep people, no, that guy, Fadi, no, Fadi. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 listen, I have a lot of respect for Troy, a lot of respect for them, a lot of respect for Luis Vasquez, for Luis Leon, Rons, Leon Rose sometimes, um, uh, and also Armando Cervantes. But Farid, Farid for me is the best in the whole world. Is the I, I had an interview with him and, you know, it was uh, like he was interviewing me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you were spent almost 24 hours 
hours a day with your beautiful um, girlfriend, your beautiful partner. But um, it's now because it's like, you know, pandemic before maybe uh, when you were traveling, not so much. Like now you are like all the time together. But how do you think to, to find this right balance, you know, to feel comfortable in the couple working together to find the right uh, balance between job and between private life? life. Well, about that question, um, I think in doing it is uh, to not get crazy about just work, 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 or practice, 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 or classes, 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 classes. Also, we have to try to, to have a life. We, no, also, we try to have a life. Uh, uh, we have rituals, you know? Rituals, uh, rituals. Mm -hmm. But, and that helped a lot to our relationship. And also, I got lucky. I got super, super lucky <laughs> because she's super smart. She's uh, She has an amazing education. And uh, I have many issues. Many, many, <laughs> many, many. many uh, because the education that I, that, I, that I got in Mexico and, um, you know, my brother and my father, they have a strong personality. And uh, I have a little bit of that too. So I normally react like very, very with a strong personality, very angry men, very crumpy men sometimes. And uh, before I was really bad, really, really bad with that issues. And with her, like most of the time, she's just watching me like this. When I'm doing all my crazy crises, she's like this. And sometimes when I'm not right, she's like, okay, you are not right. You are not talking me in the in a in a in a very good way. I think you should come down and we should find a solution. And she make me feel as, as a caveman. And for real, and inside me, I'm like, a, oh my God, she's really making me feel as a caveman. Am I a caveman? I'm acting as a caveman. Yeah, I have to come down. I have to, I have to say in defense, actually, okay. he's an amazing gentleman and very respectful, very good. Mm -hmm. So don't believe anything that <laughs> <laughs> We love each other a lot, a lot for real. But also, of course, at every couple, we have fights. We have great fights too. Great, great. He fights. loves. He loves. <laughs> well, in my education, in my culture, we love drama. We love drama. Drama, of course, yes. We love drama because we grow up with telenovelas. We yeah. <laughs> drama around us. You know, every time we walk in the street, we walk in the street, and if we see somebody doing this or or loud in each other or screaming each other, right away we do this. Oh, madrazos, madrazos. That means like a, a fight, fight, fight. Like, a, and we're like this, you know, even if we go in the car, we're like this, like, a, oh, fight. And in my education, it's totally opposite. <laughs> like, if something is happening, you're like, okay, it's not our business, let's go to another direction. <laughs> so that's why it's a little bit like... <laughs> we yeah. have, when, you have, when you have fights, uh, you mean, uh, in, in which language? I mean, uh, Russian, Spanish? No, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> what other hobbies do you have besides dancing? Well... We love to eat. <laughs> we love to eat a lot and we are so spoiled and, and we have high expectations about food because, you know, every time when we used to travel, especially to Italy, the food in Italy is like amazing. And uh, we used to go to very, very spec expensive places to eat. Sometimes we were spending a lot of money just, just for taste, just to have, just for the pleasure of that taste in our mouth, wine, pasta, pizza, and also vegan places. So that's something that we love to do, to and eat. Movies. Oh, and movies. We are fun movies, fun movies. Latin American, uh, you mean so populous. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I love to, I mean, also I take it as a therapy. I love to swim. So I swim three times per week, sometimes four. But I try to, I try to control it because I can swim every day, like crazy. Okay, of course, because dancers also have injuries. By the way, how you get over this? Maybe you had some injuries. Uh, I mean, dancing is risky. Uh, and if you had some, how you got over this? Well, to avoid, to avoid that, we try to 
we try to go to you know to sauna like kind of often to do counter shower which is hot and cold hot and cold and also to the russians russians uh, ideas <laughs> yeah Sorry. And also, uh, Ricky Chacha Picasso that was living with us too and, may, and doing a lot of classes with us too. He's our physical trainer and also our physiotherapy, physiotherapist. He's really good and he, he taught us how to do physiotherapy to ourselves. And that's really good. It, ha it has been helping us a lot to avoid like strong injuries in our body. I have uh, several questions that I ask in the uh, final part. One is, what would you change in your life if you had an opportunity to go back to the past? <laughs> oh, we love, we love our life exactly that, the way that it is. And uh, we think and we believe that everything happened for a reason. And uh, if, if we are in in the way that we are, like personal and also in business and also emotional, is because everything that we have been passing through. What is absolute happiness to you? Oh, well, you know, uh, we think that happiness could be totally relative and subjective. Uh, for me, happiness is exactly what I have now. I never been so happy in my life like the way that I am now. I'm sharing with the person that I love 24 hours per seven, and we share everything, everything, and also we support to each other a lot. And um, we, have, as I said it before, we have a lot of respect to each other. And uh, I think the most important thing in our relationship is how we support to each other. And when I feel down, she's always there to, to help me stand up. And the same when she's down, I'm always there to trying to push her. And we're in bad moments. We don't feel lonely because we have each other to, to keep going, right? We have been uh, spending really bad moments and moments too. And uh, we're never alone in the bad moments. And it's, that's, that's a bad thing. To have somebody that support you, it doesn't matter if you don't have money, she's always there. Because after this one time, I really realized how much she loved me. Before quarantine, I was... <laughs> I was traveling every weekend. I was making a lot of money. I was thinking that I was totally fine and that my life was totally uh, secure forever, right? That was totally a really big mistake. And um, that I was giving to my, my woman everything, everything that I was making. Because we were, we were traveling together. We were spending on flight tickets because I want her to be with me every weekend. And then once this quarantine start, I was totally locked, empty, broke, with nothing, and she stayed there. She oh, stayed yeah, there. <laughs> and, uh, and then when I saw that, and then when I saw that, I said to myself, I never, I never told you that. But, no, he did it. The first time you say that, why are you doing But that it? means a lot to me because she didn't left. She was there supporting me and, and she showed me that she was there because, because the person that I'm at, that I am. And I just decided from now in the future, everything that I make is gonna be for you. So if I make 10 euros, I'm just gonna have maybe five cents for me and the rest is gonna be for you. So this is like a social talks, a sincere talks, and most maybe three I have ever had for the six months. We uh, celebrate six months edition, and uh, that's why thank you very much. It was really, really uh, impressive that you open up during our live interview. Thank you very much. Stay healthy. Uh, guys who are watching us, thank you very much for joining my program. See you next time. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you.